an Audi or any other VAC vehicle like Skoda and Seat, you will also need a laptop. The price for this cable, you can buy three different licenses. The basic one will work only for three different cars. The medium license will work on 10 cars and the unlimited version, which is this one, will work on any number of vehicles. For the free version you will pay around 250 euros, the 10 win version costs around 300 and the unlimited will cost you around 450 up to 500 euros. It isn't cheap but I would say that it's definitely worth it. And for you wondering, this isn't the factory Volkswagen scan tool. The factory Volkswagen scan tool is called the Audis but the authorized dealerships also use this VCDS software so that have to tell you that it is really great piece of software okay so i will connect this cable and i will show you what it can do okay we can plug it into our obd2 port and now connect it to the computer okay so we are inside the vcds we can start by doing an auto scan which is reading default codes we would either have to input the vehicle or it can auto detect the vehicle if we have the Cambus system and now i click on this gateway installation list units that are in black writing are okay without any faults and control units that are in red writing have some fault which is immobilizer control unit and driver's door control unit okay to see default codes we need to press the start button Lights like this are completely normal when the diagnostic software is scanning your ABS control module, so don't worry about that. Okay, so the full scan is complete. Now we have control unit number one engine. There are some information about control unit. And on the bottom it says no fault code found. So there is no fault code for, for any of these units. For immobilizer we have code 16346 telling us that our control module is defective. And in the driver's door control module we have also one fault code for electric window motor. There are no or incorrect basic settings. You can hear that it is not alright when I try to roll window up and down. There are definitely some problems there, but you just have to take apart this panel and take the look. You get very detailed full scan, which will scan all control units in your vehicle. Now you can also clear these codes. Now some of the codes cannot be cleared, like this too, because I didn't repair the fault. So the codes will just appear back right away. But most of these OBD2 codes can be erased. See, already those control units are in red, so the code is there again. Cannot be erased until I fix the problem, which is causing this code. Okay, next you have service reminder interval reset and you can do service reset and and customize your service intervals here now we can also check these applications here you have a bunch of options like activate transport mode a serial mileage this doesn't work for every car but we can take a look read VCDS was not able to retrieve mileage from this ECU. The ECU is either not supported or does not store mileage, sorry. Okay, no problem. A while ago I actually made a video how you can use this VCDS to verify your car's mileage. And I found I had the Skoda Rapid with 310,000 kilometers and I was able to find that it actually had more than 370,000 kilometers in the vehicle's live data. If you want to know how you can verify mileage on your VAC vehicle with this software, I will put a link somewhere in here so you can go ahead and check that video. Okay, next very important feature that you want to do with your diagnostic software is reading the live data. Now this software can access live data from all control modules. Right now I want to look at engine live data, especially the data for catalytic converter and my oxygen sensors because I suspect that can be something wrong with that. But you can also read the data from all other control modules, which is exactly what I was using in the mileage verify video, which I was talking about before. But right now we will take a look at engine's live data. So we want to go to select control module, go to the engine, and you can look at the live data either in these measured blocks, which are multiple data combined, or in advanced measured values. I want to do that one. And now let me get, let me look for oxygen sensor data. Okay, so you can look at those live data, which will help you diagnose car problems in form of graph. I didn't use this software so much yet. I don't know how you can zoom these graphs in, but I am sure there is a way okay wait i i think i know because i have the scale for maximum voltage at 20 the voltage is from 0 to 1 so when i change it to 1 wait i have to change both of them yes oh, okay now that's better 
Okay, so you just have to input their minimum and maximum values to zoom in. Now I get precise reading. I know I am not a professional mechanic, but I studied a little bit this data for oxygen sensors. And the mechanics explained it that this fluctuating is common for the sensor number one. But the sensor number two should be more stable and should not be following the sensor number one data almost exactly the same. So either we have a problem with catalytic converter or there isn't any or our oxygen sensor number two is faulty. And I would say that the problem is in catalytic converter because also the car is, because also you can smell a lot of gas and oil when I step on the gas and from the outside you can really smell it. So I am suspecting that there isn't catalytic converter at all okay so amazing feature watching live data like this and you can put four a 12 different values here which is the most that i ever saw in a scan tool so these are the live data now we will take a look at what i think the most of you want to see and that is the coding functions so unlocking hidden features customizing your vehicle now that is done with the long coding and adaptations and by the way you can watch live data as i said in every control module for example in here you can also select values and you have a bunch of different data which you could display let's go ahead and check those customizations for example we can do some changes in instrument cluster customizations are done in either coding or adaptation we can go to adaptation select the adaptations channels and now you have all of these options. Let's say we want to change our language. Here is my description, which is telling me that store value 2 means English language. And you can check that my car is in English language. But there are a bunch of other languages that could be set. For example, the French language is value number 3. So if I input the new value, I press this test. And now I have my car in French language. If I want, I could save it. However, I don't know any French, so I will just go back, input the two, and save it. Okay, I can go back. You get a bunch of adaptations, and this is just one control module. For every control module, there are some adaptations and long coding options. And now I will show you the long coding. For example, the central electrics can open this coding. Now we need to go to this long coding helper. Here are all the changes that we can do. See, they are coming home, food well lights, blah, blah, blah. And this is just one byte, or one page of this whole code. See, this is the page EC. EC are only two digits of this whole control unit's code. Every two digits represent its own page. So, to show you, I will go to page, let's say, byte number seven. Here is the option to make my turn signals as daytime running lights, which means I would have permanently running turn signals. Now I will go ahead and input the value 100 and that is the brightness. If I put 50%, it would be at 50% brightness. But it is daytime and I want you to see the change. So I will put it the most bright as it can be, 100%. And now it edited this whole control unit's code for me. Okay, now I can just go back, input the new value. Coding is accepted. So let's check it now. the turn signals are running permanently. So there are a lot of options to customize. The more newer a car is, the more options there are to customize. And if you want to get some idea which customizations will be able for your car, here is a little tip how to do that. You may be known this device, it is called OBD11, and it is very similar to this VCDS software, but it is made for smartphones. But you also get these long coding adaptations, and they even have the one-click applications, which are pre-made coding. So you can go to OBD11's official website, the link is in the description, you can go to to supported car models, input your vehicle and you will check what is possible to code with this device and what is possible to code with this OBD11 will most likely be possible to code also with VCDS. The VCDS actually often have more options than OBD11. Okay, so that is the car customization. There is also every function that you could need, either for servicing or diagnosing cars. You also have bidirectional tests. It's when you test different car components just with commands on your scan tool, you get the service functions like service interval resets, electronic brake calipers, opening and close. Basically the codings you need while servicing a modern vehicles. You also don't need to pay subscriptions and while the cable isn't the cheapest, it is worth it because you are really getting professional software. You can do a lot of codings, you can do customization, you can use it to service your car, diagnose problems, read live data, use it as used car check, verify 
carries real mileage. And we are using the laptop, which make it hard to carry around this device. But the bright side is that it will make things a lot faster and more stable. OBD11 is amazing device, but sometimes you can run into connection issues with your phone or something. If you are using laptop and, and cable, there is not much that can go wrong with communication. And in addition to all these advanced features, you also have this OBD2 option, which is basically like, if you know those little car code readers that were very popular like 20 years ago, now you have this one function that basically is built-in code reader. If you click on this OBD2, it's exactly the same like those cheap code readers. You can read the data. Okay, so you have mode one, which is reading the data. You got this readiness, which will check your emission and exhaust components. And we can already see there is some problem with catalytic converter, oxygen sensor monitoring. We already did went over those data. Here they are. So mode one, read data. Mode two is freeze frame for those data. There is no freeze frame currently. Mode three is current DTCs or diagnostic trouble codes. Okay, mode four is clearing the DTC. Mode five is oxygen sensors. Okay, so that was the preview of VCDS software. I am recommending it. However, this cable isn't the cheapest. So if you just want to maybe look at some data once in a while, or maybe do a few customizations for your car, all you need is this OBD11 and free version. You don't even have to pay subscription. But if you are DIY mechanic, you want to service your own vehicle, or you are running some kind of business with vehicles, you either have the car shop, car service, or you are buying or selling used cars, you definitely will benefit from having this VCDS software for Volkswagens, Audis and other VAG vehicles. So yes, it is pricey, but it is worth it. If you spend your money, you definitely won't make a mistake. You will only make a mistake if you buy this and use it to just basically functions like reading few live data here and there I can just use the obd11 for that okay so that is everything from me and i will see you in the next reviews